So today we're going to work on some simple shaders that will hopefully set the groundwork for more complex shaders in the future. In the description I'll put some links to some other people's videos on more complex uh, shaders, mostly from Gonky. Uh, he has absolutely wonderful videos on very complex shaders. I thought it'd be good to have a few tutorials on something a little bit simpler. So we have a handful here of just ones that fade differently. This one mixes colors, which you could probably do with the modulate on the node, but this will show you how you can do it in shader language and build upon it in the future. And this last one will actually disappear as the player gets closer. So just to make sure we understand what UV actually means is just like X and Y in a grid, and just like computer screens where 0, 0 is the top left corner, and the X gets larger as you move across the screen to the right, and also the Y gets larger as you go down, but the main difference is that it's normalized, or it will always be a number between 0 and 1, on the X and the Y, no matter how big the sprite or the node or whatever your shading is, it's always going to give you the ratio of how far along you are uh, between 0 and 1, 0 being the beginning and 1 being the end of the area that you are shading. It's important to note right away that this is not GD script and has a lot of little things you have to remember that's a little bit more tedious, but you can do a lot of really cool things with just a few lines of code. And you should also know that Godot has its own specific version of this language. So if you look up shaders on websites like ShaderToy and other uh, places that use shaders, it's going to be slightly different. You'll have to translate it from that basic shader language to the Godot specific language. And so for starters, you always have to have the shader type uh, canvas item when you're working in 2D. And we're also going to just work with the fragment shader, which the fragment shader takes every single pixel in the image and it runs this code on it. So we're going to start with the one that fades towards the bottom. So all this is saying is it takes the color of the image, and so it's red, which means it's going to be a built-in uh, variable about this image. And we're going to set it to white, so the this vector 4 is the R, G, B, and then alpha of the image. And you can go ahead and play around with all of these, uh, very, or all of these numbers and see what you come up with if you want to just see what the different types of numbers will give you. But the reason why we have 1 minus the UV, if you remember, the UV is 0 at the top going down to 1. And so if we take this off, it will fade at the top. Uh, and so, I mean, it's whichever one you want. But you can also use the UV X, and it will fade to the side. and all types of neat things like that. Now one example that I also wanted to give about the fading is this one adds just a little bit to that idea because instead of turning it white or any specific color, we're actually going to use the texture of the sprite and then fade the bottom. So I used this in my last video of showing how you can see this line at the bottom where the sprite ends, and I just want it to fade into darkness. So I actually added just the same shader of at the bottom, it fades away, and you can't really see where it fades into the darkness, and I think it just looks a lot better. Now the main difference here is instead of setting the color to a vector 4 of specific numbers, we're going to set it to the texture of the image that we have, and this is the code that you use to do it. It's a little bit confusing to say we're going to set the color of our image to the color of our image, but that's kind of what this line means, but it's necessary in this language to do, otherwise it'll just turn it white. 
Now again, we're just going to get 1 minus the uv of y, so that way it fades at the bottom, and we will only set the alpha this time to that number. So another very simple one that looks almost exactly the same is instead of measuring from the UV of the image, you can measure from the UV of the screen. So when you move this image around, it'll fade and brighten up depending on where on the screen it is. Now if you change this to X, you can have it fade and brighten whether you go left or right. Now you can also mix colors now if you set a, a variable outside of the fragment shader, you should put a uniform in front of it, and all that means is that you can actually adjust it from outside of the shader. So in GDScript you would actually be able to set these colors. And I just picked a few random colors here. And in the fragment shader, I'm going to make another variable called the final color, and that's what we will set the color to. If we're going to mix the colors together, and this percentage that we're going to calculate is going to be how much the second color actually influences the first one. The percentage is the absolute value of sine over time, which in short is just going to give us a number between 0 and 1, going back and forth over and over again. And then, instead of actually setting out all of the different vector 4 variables, we can actually just grab whichever ones we want. We are going to have the RGB of the final, or the red, green, and blue, uh, and we will set it to this vector 3. Now, you actually can move these around if you want, uh, and it will give you different results if you kind of want to mix things up. Uh, that's always an option. So in this one, we're going to set a uniform, and we're going to actually change this uniform in the GD script, which I'll show you in just a minute. Now we're going to make another uh, final alpha to keep the information in. And this is how you do an if statement in this language. So first you put if, and then in parentheses, you have to put what the check is to see if it is actually greater than 0.1, and then inside of these brackets you have to put what you want to have happen. And then again, to continue with the else statement is the same thing. And then we will, once we decide whether we want it to be 0 or the distance to the player, we will set the alpha to the final alpha. Now the reason why I put this check in it is uh, I want it to actually completely disappear if the player gets close, and sometimes the position will just leave a, a tiny fraction of a number, uh, just a tiny little number that you can still faintly see the square. Uh, but this way it completely disappears when the player is relatively close. We're not going to worry about this last line here because that's actually for the tile set. So in the physics process, we're going to measure the distance from the player position to the icon position. And then we're going to divide it by 250. And I also clamped it so it's between 0 and 1. And then we're going to get the icon. So if, just so you can see exactly on icon is just referencing the node that has the shader. We're going to go to the material and set the shader param and distance to player and this information that we have here. That's how you set the send the information along to this uniform so it can use it in its calculations. So I made the tile disappear by having two tile maps and having them overlap so it looks like they're one. Now in the second tile map, I actually went to specifically the tile, so this is not an auto tile, this is just a, you add single tiles, and I went specifically to number three, which is the one I wanted, I added a shader, this one's a little bit longer, which I can show you why, so what it looks like if you don't have this code is, like I said, it, it fills in that alpha there, and it just was annoying me, so you have to deal with extra code. So I commented out this first check to see if the alpha was clear, and you have this fill in. Okay, so we're back to it being clear. And also, you can clamp the alpha here. 
Uh, it sh you probably don't need to since I clamped it in the GD script. I just wanted to show you the code of how you actually clamp in this shader language. Now in the script, the hidden map tiles, that's just the tile map 2, the one that is only the one square. I'm going to get the tile set get the material from specifically number three, and set the shader param to the distance of the distance player to that x, just like this one, I set the shader param. I just had to go a little bit deeper to actually get to the tile set material. And what you end up with are a bunch of shaders. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you'd like to see more of this, uh, let me know, and, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments.